What's up tech fam? Today we're diving into the A-Star Mako Mini PC. Now, I know what you're thinking. Another mini PC review, right? Wrong. Actually, you're right. Damn it, I hate being wrong. Well, this one's a little different. It brings back a feature that I didn't expect to see again. Now I don't talk about this much, but back in the Boomer Mini PC days, you'd find the power button situated on the top. See, here's an ancient relic from 2014. But to my disappointment, years later Intel moved it to the front with their NUC Mini PC, everyone copied it, and I just accepted it. Some battles are best waged elsewhere, like with glued on rubber feet. But the power button returns with the AU Star Mako, baby. They brought it back from the grave. Cue the meme. Rise from your grave. Oh, and it also supports unlocking windows with your fingerprint if you don't mind Microsoft getting their filthy hands on it. So that's one way to stand out in what feels like a million mini PCs on the market. Another is to make the mini bigger. And this is definitely on the chunkier side for a mini PC. We're talking about hitting one liter in volume. So it's not going to disappear on your desk like some of those ultra compact options. But you know what? That extra girth actually serves a purpose. And we'll get to that in a minute. Or maybe we won't. I'll see how I feel at the time. The Mako's chassis is apparently made of 100% recycled aluminium metal. That alone will help save the planet from all the unnecessary plastic packaging ending up in landfill and should make us all feel very warm and fuzzy inside. It sure feels solid in the hands though. Gotta love that recycling. Another way to stand out is to feature a CPU that others don't. And that's definitely not the case here. We have the AMD Ryzen H255, which is a refresh of the 8745HS, a popular bang for buck CPU. AMD has chosen to put its most powerful options behind a nice big paywall. I heard that paywall just got three feet higher. Sorry, that's out of my budget range. Luckily, that's not the case with the AU Star Mako. Coming in at 339 US dollars for the bare bones, or 469 USD for the 32GB RAM, 1TB SSD option. That's a pretty good price for what you get, which includes a compact 19V 120W power supply, a couple of SSD thermal pads and heat sinks, and a HDMI cable. On the front is a 3.5mm audio jack, dual USB Type A 10 gigabit, and a 40 gigabit USB 4. On the side is where the Mako stands out a bit with an oculink port. I also like that they've covered it with a rubber insert that's attached to the case and it's easy enough to remove. The Wi-Fi 6 chip for wireless and Bluetooth is what we commonly see around this price. Sometimes it's 6E, but not this time. On the back we have another USB 4 40 gigabit, dual 2.5 gigabit LAN, HDMI, display port, USB type A 5 gigabit, and USB 2. Both USB 4 ports support power delivery and display, which is great to see. Opening up the Mako is nice and easy. After the four screws are out, there's an indent to lift the lid with. If only it was always this easy. There are two 2280 M.2 Gen 4 NVMe slots. For some strange reason, they haven't put the heatsink on the included crucial SSD drive. I'll test with and without it. Also, it looks like I've been shortchanged. There's only a single 16GB stick of DDR5 5600, even though the listing is for 32GB. Awesome. That's going to drop the benchmark results. But we test as we get them. Don't worry though, I will test with two sticks in dual channel config as well. If you buy the pre-build over the bare bones, Windows 11 Pro will be pre-installed on the SSD. Happy to report, no malware was found on the Windows OS. The Ubuntu test worked fine. Yep, that includes wireless and Bluetooth. Each mini PC is tested with its out of the box mode and a high performance mode if available. But since this one showed up with one stick of RAM, the balance mode is tested that way, while the performance mode is tested with dual channel DDR5 5600. Cinebench single core CPU performs fine either way, and there's no benefit with two sticks of RAM. Multicore sees a good result out of the box, and with performance mode, it's the fastest H.265 on this list. 
that's purely from the power increase. Geekbench single core is a bit behind, but with the second RAM stick, it performs as it should. Geekbench multi-core performance is affected by RAM speed, and there's a huge difference between one and two sticks. You'll also get a score close to this in balance mode with a 32GB RAM kit. Video encoding is another workload that is affected by memory speed, and with H.264, it's showing the worst result out of the box. Performance mode with a dual channel memory configuration performs just like the GMK Tech K12. AV1 is also the same deal, and the Mako holds up well against the competition when fully kitted out. Next, we take the same file and offload the tough parts to the integrated graphics for a much faster encode. This workload also relies on faster memory speed and performs fine once it's running with two sticks. The Geekbench AI CPU workload result closely follows similar CPU offerings. The GPU result, in this case with two RAM sticks and performance mode enabled, is also good. With one stick of RAM, integrated graphics performance goes down the toilet and is an insult to the 8745HS's capabilities. So we add the result with a second stick and the Mako gets the best score in Firestrike when comparing the CPUs with Radeon 780M graphics. It has close to the best score in Time Spy and the best result in Steel Nomad Lite. These graphics scores aren't affected by the power mode. It really just comes down to RAM. AMD CPUs with Radeon 780M play most esports games pretty well at 1080p low. Valorant is very light on GPU usage, so 4K medium gets a pretty good frame rate. AAA games are usually going to be 1080p low if running natively rendered, and many new ones will not run at a decent frame rate without some sort of upscaling method. I test with native rendering to show what you can expect at worst, and here's another new game showcase. Outer Worlds 2 is one of those games that will only hit a more consistent 30fps with upscaling. Popular current emulators work well with many games running full speed at native or higher resolutions. The Mako's USB 4 and Oculink port allows for various expansion opportunities. Here's Oculink and USB 4 performance side by side with an eGPU. In most games, Oculink provides a large boost in frame rate due to the extra bandwidth on offer. Since there's no fan underneath cooling the RAM, I wanted to check how temps hold up. And there's nothing to worry about. The highest temperature was 63C on one of the sticks after an hour under load, and this was tested at a higher 25C ambient for good measure. There's actual airflow going through the spacey carriage. Back to the charts. The Linux kernel compile is also affected by memory speed, and with one stick, there's a big gap between the two results. Balance mode will be much narrower with two sticks. Adobe Photoshop performance falls behind even a Ryzen 6800H with this short changed unit, and after adding another 16GB and enabling performance mode, it's one of the best performers on this list. The result out of the box is even worse in Adobe Premiere. I've no idea why AUSTAR would send me a unit with half the RAM, but it is what it is. Even with two, Jim Ktex K12 and B-Link Sur 9 had better scores. The bundled Crucial SSD is a fast one according to 3DMark's storage benchmark. Only a few others managed to beat it. SSD temp maxed out at 63C with no heatsink. That's better than expected, and it didn't thermal throttle. And with a heatsink installed, there's a drop of almost 10 degrees for the maximum temp to 54C. It's well worth doing, and something else that should be done at the factory level. Bluetooth range is very average. Wireless has no dropout or latency issues at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. Idle power draw is also average at 9 watts. While the maximum power draw with balance mode is a bit higher than usual, but performance mode is about the same. 
The CPU temp maxed out similar to a lot of the competition. Nothing amazing, but not bad either. That's also what can be said about fan noise. Although, performance mode is plenty loud and definitely not recommended for the small gains. You'll get around 90 to 95% of the performance with balance mode, with two RAM sticks of course. The Mako is a much larger Mini than most, hitting 1 litre in volume. It's easier to take apart, and doesn't require cooling for the RAM or SSD, as there's enough airflow coming from the CPU cooler. So that's one benefit of its larger size. The delete key on startup will get you into the BIOS. GFX configuration is where you can set the VRAM limit. In AMD CBS, FCH common options, you'll find the AC power loss option. SMU common options lets you set the power limit manually and has a fan control. From time to time I get asked about RAID. It's almost never included in these minis, and this one doesn't have the option either. Hardware monitor is another place you can change the fan curve. Power configuration has auto power on and the power limit setting. Alright, now we head into the mini PC checklist. A Stars Mako ticks a lot of the boxes. The only thing in the first column that doesn't go green is that there's no VESA mount included. In the second column it checks everything. Yes, technically my unit didn't come with max memory speed, but I'm not mad. And that shouldn't be a problem for anyone else, since there is no 1TB 16GB RAM configuration for sale that I could find. In the third and final column, it's okay for load fan noise in balance mode, and by okay, I mean the average cutoff. Performance mode is too loud. A-Star does include drivers, OS recovery downloads, and even BIOS updates on their website. It's not very neat, but it's there. No drivers for this one listed yet, so it's a tick with the assumption that they'll add it soon. There's only a standard one year warranty included. That's 27 out of 30 ticks, the best score yet since the checklist was introduced quite recently. There we have it, a Stars Mako 8745HS. A good option if you want something under 500 US dollars with Oculink. And I'm sure loving the return of the power button on top. I hope more brands will follow suit. I just wish fan noise was lower under load, instead of just matching many other minis on the market. If you're interested, find it linked in the video description, and anything you purchase really helps the channel out. A-Star also has a gaming mini PC with a dedicated graphics chip we looked at recently, and you can find the review of it right here. Cheers!